I'm Lori from Fox City's Quilt Company and this is Sunday from the Sewing Room where we share tips, tricks, and a few tutorials to help you with your sewing and quilting projects. If you like our videos, please hit that subscribe button below. Today, I will be showing you how to make a microwave bowl cozy or microwave mitt. And you'll, I'll show you step by step how to create it. What's nice about it is that it uses a 10 inch square. So if you have leftovers from a layer cake, um, you can use those, or you can just pick some of your favorite fabrics. So stay tuned. So let's get started on our microwave bowls. We need two 10 inch squares of fabric and we need two 10 inch squares of batting. Now what's important to remember when you make the microwave bowls is that everything needs to be 100% cotton. The fabric, the thread, and the batting. And it's also important to not use metallics. Um, have any metallics on your fabric. Now this collection that I'm uh, using today for my microwave bowl is from a collection that we have called Happy Veggies. If you go to our website, you'll see a lot of different vegetable fabrics that are adorable and great to use for this project. So we're gonna match up our two pieces of fabric with the batting. So we've got our two 10 inch squares, wrong side to the batting. And we're going to sew an X from each corner. And we're going to do that on both of our pieces for our bowl. Now that we've sewn our X through both of our pieces, we're going to fold each one in half with the fabric on the inside. We're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure from the corner two inches in and we're going to mark it and we're going to go one inch up and we're going to mark it we're going to do that on all four corners so when we've marked our one inch and our two inch then we're going to draw a line on the batting and we're going to sew on that line. So I'm going to mark it again, two inches in. On the bottom across the fold. And then one inch on the side. And then I'm going to go to my machine again and I'm going to stitch from one point to the next. And I'm going to make sure that I back stitch at the beginning and back stitch at the end. So I'm securing it. So I'm going to go forward. I'm going to back up. I'm going to stitch across. I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to stop. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to do this on all four corners. So each one, I'm going to fold these in half. And I'm going to mark them just like I did this one. Once I've marked them and cut and, and um, sewn, then I'm going to take the corner and I'm going to trim off, leaving a quarter inch from the seam allowance. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. Okay, so you can see I have done the four corners. Now we're going to open this up and fold it the other way, making sure that we match it up on the corners, flattening it out, and we're gonna do the same thing going this direction, where we're gonna take our ruler, we're gonna mark two inches on the fold, and then one inch on the side. We're gonna draw our line just like we did before. And then we're ready to back stitch, stitch, and then back stitch again. And you can see that I've taken this, opened it up, and refolded it the other direction so that when I'm done, I've made my little tucks on all four corners. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch these. We're gonna go forward, back it up so we can secure that stitch. We're gonna go forward, following on our line. We're gonna back it up. Then we're going to 
cut it. And now we're going to make our tr trimming off that, leaving a quarter inch from my seam. And then we're going to do it on all four corners. Now that I have all the pleats made in the four corners, I'm going to turn my bowl such that I can match my right sides together. So I'm going to turn this around so that when I put it inside, I've got right sides together. I'm going to take my binding clips, which are some of my favorite things to use when I'm making bags or different things like this instead of using pins. And I'm going to go all the way around and I'm just going to clip this together. And then after I've got it all clipped together, because I want to make sure that my um, pleats are together. Not that they have to be, but it just gives it a nice little added feature. So what I'll do is I'm going to go all the way around. Once I've clipped this all the way around, I'm going to sew a half inch seam all the way around, making sure that I leave a three inch opening that I can turn the bowl inside out. So now that I've clipped it all the way around, I've also marked with pins exactly where I'm gonna leave an opening to make sure that I leave that three inch opening so that I can turn it right side out, not wrong side out. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna make sure I've got a half inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna actually go forward back up so I can secure that. And then I'm gonna start sewing with a half an inch seam allowance. When I get to the corner, I'm gonna make sure that my needle is down. I'm gonna pivot. And then that way I can just stitch all the way around using the half inch seam allowance. I'm going to cut my corners now, being very careful not to cut any of the um, half inch seam that I've just cut, but this is going to help when I turn it around to make sure that my points come out a little sharper. So I'm just going to trim off that little extra batting and fabric, making sure again that I don't cut through the seam. So now that I've trimmed that, I'm going to take my hole that I've left open and I'm going to turn it around. So go down to the far bottom corner. I like to bring that through first, just like turning any, anything else that you'd make. I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to make sure that when I get to my corners, I'm going to take my fingers, just make sure I give it a nice good poke. And that's one of the reasons I trimmed off that extra batting so that I can have a nice little corner there. And I'm just going to kind of do that with each. As I go along, I kind of finger press my seam. There's my last corner. So now, got right sides out and I'm almost done. So now with our hole that we've left, we have to be sure that we tuck that under and we're gonna clip it. Get a couple more of my binding clips. If you don't have any of these binding clips, like I said before, they're fantastic. We do have them at the store. We have red ones. We have multicolors. There's different sizes, but it's kind of nice for me to have this medium size for these. I'm going to clip this so that I make sure that I'm closing up the hole when I top stitch. So the last step then is going to be to do exactly that. I'm going to top stitch this all the way around, making certain that when I top stitch right here that I catch both edges so it's a nice closed um, section. Okay, so we're going to get ready to top stitch. This is where, I mean, if you have a sewing machine that has different decorative stitches, it might be fun to do that. I am just going to use my regular top stitch. You might want to change and use a different colored thread. There's a lot of fun options for this. I am, like I said, going to kind of finger press this just to make sure that it's nice and flat. And I'm going to start here, that way when I come around to this edge, I'll make sure I get that closed tightly. But I'm going to start right here. Literally, I'm just going to do a quarter inch around. So make sure you've got it on your presser foot exactly where it is that you want to sew. And I'm going to start my top stitching.
so here you have it. Here's our finished bowl cozy for the microwave. The other thing that's really fun about this is it can also be used for ice cream. So many times I'm eating my ice cream and it gets too cold, I can stick it in my little bowl cozy and I'm all set to go. If you have any questions or would like any of the supplies that you saw in this video, please call us. This is Lori from Foxy's Quilt Company. Thank you for watching.